I'm Joshua. And I'm Leah. And we would like to thank you for listening to the Reasonably Prepared Podcast. A preparedness resource for the complete beginner. We are here to help you on your preparedness journey. Without the paranoia, fear, and doomsday often associated with preparedness. If you find our podcast helpful, please subscribe and leave a comment letting us know. And now, on on to to the the show. show. All right, welcome to Reasonably Prepared Podcast. Today, we are going to be discussing disaster preparedness plans and why they're important. Stick around. Stick stick around. Okay, awesome. No, no, no. All right, so for those of you who uh, watch the YouTube channel know that I did a... Uh, I did a, uh, um, an episode a little while ago on things that you can do to be pre- start being prepared now that are free. I did a, 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 a first three and then a second three. And you, I'll put those in, in the link. You can go on YouTube to watch those. What are three things you can do now? And one of them was to form a disaster preparedness plan, form a plan, and practice it. And so I'd been asked... Uh, well, how do I do that? What, how do I, how do I form a plan? Where do I begin to form a plan? Josh, that's you know, those are great ideas. So, um, my brother Matthew um, used to has, not, has worked for many many companies, actually performing or building disaster preparedness plans, and he lives in an area of the country, which is South Houston, that or Southwest. What is it, Matt? South South South, South, South Houston. Houston. Yeah. And he, well, he you know, would do this. He had a lot to say about it. He was talking to me about disaster preparedness plans. He had a lot of really good information on it. And I decided, you know what, bro, just come on the the channel. Let's do a podcast on how we can help people actually build and and the importance of doing a disaster preparedness plan. So my awesome brother, Matthew, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for being here. It's awesome. I'm super, super excited that you came up here to do that. Uh, So do that. Tell me. Tell us and the listeners a, a little bit about, ju- okay, so not not the personal background yet, but professional mm-hmm. background in right. what you did for all these companies, these right. b- huge companies, right. um, when it, number one, building everything, to do, and then disaster right. preparedness. So I have been in the facilities management field for most of my professional career, which is about 20 years, um, and a large part of facilities management is emergency preparedness. A lot of it's building focused, like prepping the building for an emergency or what to do with the people inside the building if there's an emergency currently happening. Um, so in one of my jobs, which is one of the largest energy companies in North America, um, I acted more of a support role um, as the facility manager. I said building focused, um, people focused. There was a, a there was a, a BCDR is the acronym, Business Continuity Disaster Recovery Mm -hmm. Prime that we use, and they're sort of over the whole thing. And so in that company, um, and it it was, I want to say early days in this particular company, really caring about this subject. So being part of the process where we were actually getting to develop plans and implement them. And then I moved over to a a pretty large um, software company where I was the BCDR Prime. Now they what had is a, that acronym again? BT, BC. BCDR is Business Continuity Disaster Recovery. Right, okay. So after right. an event or during so, an event. Or bi- pro- yeah. yeah, business continuity is keeping us alive during a disaster. And then the recovery yeah. process is what do we have to do the building and for our people to get back to normal. Um, and so that's, that's where I was the prime. Now the second company had a really great plan in place already. So it wasn't developing uh, was the it plan. More implementing? Uh, it, yes, it was uh, fine tuning really, um, and and implementing and testing, right? Um, but learned an awful lot because they did it. They did it unbelievably well. It w- it was world class how they did it. Right. You See, uh, when we talked about this on on the phone yep. and you were coming up here, what I really enjoyed uh, that you had to say, and I, this is something I try to, you know, in our house. So uh, to give another small preface, um, you. You, you wanted to say too, you're not a doomsday prepper, right? I'm not, not. I am not, not a not doomsday a, prepper in any way. Right, a prepper, but At that does not mean being prudent and preparing for some things are, are a wise thing to do. Um, how did that being said? What, what you what I really enjoyed that you said was, um, it's not necess- like it's not enough to just have a plan on paper, 
Right. But, but then implementing that plan and practicing that plan so that right. when it's necessary and you need to do it, you can. Yeah, I would say yeah. instead of the word implementing, I would right. say testing because testing. Okay. because implementing sort of implies you, you need to do it now mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. the event that's happening. But you put your plan together and then you test that plan pretty exhaustively. Got it. And then what you do in your testing phase, especially after, is you don't look at it and go, oh, what a failure. Right. Right. You look at it and you go, I did these things well and these things need to change. Right. right. And you take a good look at it and you, you're honest with yourself mm-hmm. and you change those things. Right. And then you test them. Right. And, you know, like I said to you on the phone, these documents or however the plan is developed that you have, they're living. Right. This isn't you don't write this and then it gets put in a filing cabinet. And then when the disaster happens, you pull it out and you play the playbook. Right. Like that's a very small part of the, the, the plan. Mm-hmm. The, that that document is living. So it doesn't live in the file cabinet. It stays where it can be constantly amended. <laughs> <laughs> I just bumped the thing. Anyway, it stays where yeah. it can be constantly it, amended. Constantly amended, constantly update and constantly approved. Your right. life is going to change. Everything. It, People you know, come and go. And it needs to be taken right. into account in your plan. Right. Right. Like 10 years ago, I didn't have children. Now I have two. That needs to be thought about. Right. Exactly. Uh, you're 10 years ago, you know, the, Nana didn't live with mom. You know, things right. like that. You right. Know, things, so things change. It's an ebb and right. flow. It's an it's a expanding and contraction. Mm-hmm. And then from there, so you've got your, your, your basic architecture, mm-hmm. and then the details within that architecture kind of change. Kind of like, um, you know, if you've got a big open office space, you can move cubicles and things around on the inside to suit what's necessary at the time. Um, well, yeah, yeah, it's not that you're not really doing that. But no, in, a, in an office building, if there's a disaster coming, you, you ideally your people aren't going to be there because it's safer for them not to be. No, there. no, excuse me. I was just using it as an allegory for the oh. living, breathing document thing. So, like, oh, I've got a basic Correct. architecture, um, a basic foundation, and then within that foundation, I can move, move, move right. You know, uh, I can, I can pri- reprioritize can this, and prioritize that, yeah. and change it. But I still yeah. have the basic foundation. Right. Yeah. Um, what, is, what is the document going to be? Or not even a document. It's a plan. I mean, it's an actual. Well, that's how I mean, I would recommend you put it on a document. For sure. For right. Sure. I mean, we do that. You yeah. don't want to have it in your brain because when stress hits, you're going to forget a lot. And that's a lesson learned actually from, you know, my personal experience in mm-hmm. preparing, you know, different places I've lived for. For, for hurricanes, I mean, hurricanes, you know, hurricanes is South generally Houston, man. where I live. It's hurricanes, and I've lived through a couple. So, so let's okay. So real practically, then, so you know, we're you're doing this for companies, and then also being able to implement it for yourself. But right, um, the importance of not. So I try to talk about this a lot on the channel, as far as you know, because uh, I'm dealing, uh, not dealing with, but I'm I'm making an active attempt to talk with beginners and people who are just getting their feet wet. And what I what I don't want to do is get overwhelmed with doomsday scenarios right an actionable way you can start to implement a plan is to literally just sit down and consider Mm -hmm. what right now where i live would be my biggest issue or threat or you know where we were in california it was fire sure it was that was a constant nagging of Mm -hmm. something's going to catch fire right so we started we began with okay well if if there's a fire what do we need so Mm -hmm. let me know you know i i my my trinity is like you know, water food medical for a beginner. Just make sure you got this right. base covered initially too. But um, when we're talking about, say, evacuation plans or emergency plans, mm-hmm. um, what where do we begin um, j- immediately after, okay, tornadoes. Tornadoes are my thing. How do I then compartmentalize? How do I order company compartmentalize? Okay, well, then this is what we immediately do first, second, third, fourth. or uh, Not that it's hard and fast rule. Right. Just... Um, how can we begin to put together a plan that we can, mm-hmm. what we, like you said, practice or test um, immediately after? Okay, I know what my threat is. It's fire. Right. Well, what do I do? Right. About that. So in a in a company, and we'll go hurricanes because okay, it's yeah. literally. You, your brain has been I, wrapped around in your own property. I've done it. Yes, I've done it at home. I've done it in business. And well, it, the benefit of, and this is, sounds weird, but in a hurricane scenario, you can see them coming. Right. Right. Hurricanes aren't fires. Right. 
Well, some no, fires you could see coming. They just come fast or they come Some slow. fires. Same thing hurricanes. Yeah. yeah. Tornadoes, some just pop up. They right. Did, right. And exactly. you, get, you get minimal warning. Yeah, hurricanes. Being hurricane prone versus like, a, uh, or excuse me, being tornado prone versus like, okay, there's a hurricane on the way. Right. It's headed straight to the Gulf, right. through the Gulf of Mexico. Right. Right. So in, in the instance of hurricane, the companies that do this really well, um, the first thing they think about are the people. Okay. Right. Yes. How do we keep them safe? Mm-hmm. How do we make sure they know how to keep themselves safe? Right. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll probably, before hurricanes ever happen, mm-hmm. we'll probably have some kind of training. Right. Right. Where we've put together documents like this is a checklist of the things you can have in your house. Or in your car. In your car. Um, these are the things that you should keep on hand and mm-hmm. these are the the files you should have ready these are the places you should know to go and how to get there should Muster you need points, to leave things like that yeah you should have you know family documents family information you have family programmed into your phone you have a way to communicate with people should power go out and tell mm-hmm. cell towers fail right because right. So that's something that fails and people don't think about they always think i'll have my phone but in a hurricane Maybe you can only text. And this actually has happened in two hurricanes I've been through. You could only text. You couldn't make phone calls. Yeah, the SMS would communicate right. with the cell towers. Right. Yeah. And so um, so we think about the people. You know, We want to make sure that we've given them enough information that they can protect themselves, but we're making good decisions that we can protect them too. Mm-hmm. Right. So we want to make sure that our plans are very clear and concise and our communications are clear and concise and consistent with our plan Mm -hmm. and that we are getting it out in enough time for people to make decisions for their family. Okay. Right. So are you, so within that plan, you said, okay, what I'm already enjoying is Mm -hmm. first things first, we're, we're taking, we're, we're, we're taking care of people. Right. Okay. So, okay. Some, a threat is imminent. If a threat is imminent, we make sure people are taken care of. We're going to make sure people elderly are taken care of. We're going to make sure right. our children are taken it's care of. It's the We're, most important thing to think about. Like, buildings can be... It's tough. Buildings can be replaced, especially for a company. Like, right. Yeah, window for breaks sure. and we lose half the furniture in the building. Mm-hmm. They're insured. They can afford the furniture. Like, be right, honest, right? right? In your house, if you take a loss, like, that stuff can be replaced. And I can attest that because I lost my house in a hurricane. Right. It's hard living... And it's traumatic, but you can get through it. But it's not loss of it's life. It's not loss of life. And so the number one priority is to f- make your plan with the thought of keeping people safe. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I you know, one of the ways Lee and I did that in in California was we 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 would, you know, one of the ways we can keep each other safe is to actually talk about this stuff before it happens. Right. I mean, honestly, yeah. if we're honest about it, talk about what right. happened. It's not the, make sure there's not a stigma around it. You're just wanting to have good conversations so that in a, in an emergency situation, mm-hmm. you can take care of one another because you're not thinking, are we? How do we do this? Right, right. So is to communicate that up front. We right. We had you know we would we had a, a map of our area mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. and Lee and I had two or three muster points. You know, there's the north, south, mm-hmm. east, and west. Mu- so that's four muster points. If I'm stuck on the west side, well, we're gonna we're gonna congregate here well that's not possible then our def- next one is here do the um do the companies educate employees or have you educated employees too on you know hey few things you can have in your vehicle when you're home to and well actually you know all companies i've been in several companies where we do fire drills you know right. we do these drills and we're like right. okay make sure you're on the northwest corner you know yeah it, it, no and you go to your muster point right right and a lot of times people don't even know they're going to their muster point right. they know they're, they're supposed to meet on the lawn and the whatever and right and i'm calling it Muster right. Point, right, and on the plan it says Muster Point, and I know oh, yeah. it's called Muster Point, but most people are like, oh, "Just going over there." That's, oh yeah, do. that's the square them. That's to stand in. where they said to go. Right. That's what we practiced. Right. So right. something super to keep in mind. Not keep in mind. I just I'm automatically like the philosophy and, and want to continue for anybody right now listening that you know relationships and people are 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 the more important than say the agendas and. Then from there, I cascade down to having a great community, a strong community of relationship with people so that and you, if you are put to the test and you once again lose your home, I mean, you had to stay with family, stay right. with friends, you know. Yeah. You, we went during this ridiculously cold thing that happened in Texas, mm-hmm. we had two or three families staying in our home because we were the ones that were able to facilitate that. And right. so 
meaning taking care of people and I said it in that that video I did may we not be a community reason reasonably prepared that has the philosophy of well I've got all my shit straight and I've got my water and I've got my stuff sucks to be you right not lone island thinking would you agree that if like let's say a company implemented every man for himself no I, I mean that couldn't that's not a possibility right see and and you know you see it, it and if you watch the news for two minutes during any one of the hurricanes that hit this right. country anywhere, you will always see people pulling together. You will. S- you know what was awesome for us on the outside looking in? Uh-huh. Uh, when I say awesome, like excited, we didn't live through it because we were in a completely different part of the country right. as you. So we empathetically get it wrapped up. But the um, what was what, the Cajun? The Cajun Navy. Bro. Yeah, those guys are amazing, right? And there's no... Even the mayor no, of, of, yeah. uh, or the governor, whoever it was at the time, was saying, "Let them in. Do not do, like. I don't care if their boats are legal or not. Yeah. I don't care if they're licensed or not. We Let them in. We, we are here to help people. Those guys are amazing. It's all voluntary, from what I understand. Yeah. And they just go and they show up and they just pull people out of misery, and it's right. amazing. Right. And they don't ask for anything, and they'll go twenty six straight hours just doing what they have to do." Um, you see a lot of that, it's like, and it happens a lot. And we get a lot of floods in Houston. Right, like, right. It's just kind of. I remember people riding jet skis up and down I ten. Right, <laughs> it happens a lot, and but it never fails that people will will pull whatever resources they have to help the person that needs the help. Right, right. And it's not even just like during the event. Mm-hmm. Like when it floods, or we get a tropical system. People are displaced for a long period of time. It takes a long time to get your house back together. Well, you were out of the house. It was like six months before. No, it wasn't. It was three months for us. Was it three? It was three, yeah. For you to be able to, well, yeah, and you were in a little bit different scenario than, say, like right. rebuilding a stick. This, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, but still three months. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very long time yeah. to not have a home. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and then and you then have the, to figure out how to live your life because mm-hmm. I still had to go to work every day. Right. I still had to get my kids educated every single day. Um, you know, so it meant like we weren't living anywhere like we were living with our parents. Right. 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 Which was probably 20 miles from where my house was. But that's a 20 mile drive every morning for my wife to get the kids to school and then right. a 20 mile drive. So it's 40 miles round trip. Amazing. Right. Amazing. Every day to get the kids to school, you know, and I have to go to work and then we still have to get with general contractors and find mm-hmm. something right. to put on there for a dwelling and we have to do it pretty much as quickly as we yeah. can because like we have to get our life back to normal and it, it, and what i'm hearing is like there's so many other things that you have to do in stressful situations that if you do take a little bit of work up front and prepare for to some degree right for them that's just one less thing you have to worry about when your life is upended that's right right yeah and so let's so number i just like number one is like Find out or figure out or discuss with your mom, dad, significant other, uh, your your local community. What is our most eminent threat? I'm going to call yeah. it a threat. But, and and it not be taboo. It's not scary or worrisome. Just say, hey, what is the reality of where we live? Right. What is the reality of where yeah. we live? Don't see them as worse than they are, but as they actually are. Right. And then number two, um, while you in the beginning of formulating a plan, make sure the plan has to do with caring for people. Right. First and foremost, because mm-hmm. that's how you rebuild communities. You rebuild society. You rebuild, right. Is by caring for one another. So that's mm-hmm. step number one. Find, figure out what's in your area and what you can start to plan for and make sure that up front you're doing it to, to take care of yourself, your, your immediate family, and your community at large. Right. Um, after we figure out that it's hurricanes, mm-hmm. then where does the kind of the nitty gritty technical things you know, come in as far as like, you know, I'm not even talking about like super prepper storing of water and things like that, but just making sure we've got some very key things to make sure we can make it home or make it out alive. Right. I'm hoping I even asked that question properly. What, what would be the next step after well, that? No, it's a, it's a good question. It's a yeah. pertinent question, um, especially with hurricanes, because you have to know. So all hurricanes are unique in, in the way they make landfall and the type of damage they do and like whether they bring storm or water. And so you have to you have to do a little research and you have to figure out, OK, so if the natural disaster is earthquakes, mm-hmm. what what should I do when an earthquake hits? Right. Right. There I'm sure there's a protocol on the West Coast where they get lots of earthquakes for how to keep yourself safe in your house when everything's mm-hmm. shaking and falling apart around right. you. Right. And then 
um, you th- then you have to think about, okay, the earthquake's over. Now what? What do we do next? Right. So in the case of hurricanes, the the rule, it, it, it sort of became a, a jokey mantra almost because you say it a million times and those things become jokey mantras, but is is run from water, hide from wind. So if it's a wind-making event, you don't go anywhere. Right. Right? You sit in your house and you wait it out, but you board your house up and you get it as safe as it can be. And Oh, I see. So once again, depending on the style of storm, if right. we will. So like that one storm, which one dumped, just sat there and Harvey. dumped water? Harvey dumped mm-hmm. water. Well, it's time to get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah I mean, mean we didn't go. Water, right. Hide from wind. That's what right. you mean, like, though. Yeah, so people closer to the coast had to evacuate. You've got to right. go. Don't right. sit around. And I know people stayed and they thought, I'm not going to stay, right. but those people didn't make it, Mm-mm. right? So it, you take that stuff ste- that stuff seriously. It is better safe than sorry. I don't care, like, right. so like, I don't care how awesome we think we are. I would right. much rather hide from or run from, from uh, a, that threat and nothing mm-hmm. happen than be in the middle of it and die. Well, and, and it's not really the pride that's the issue. It's the... It's it's getting desensitized to the amount of times you run the drill. Oh, okay. And and then you stop taking it seriously because every time a hurricane spins up, the news says there's a hurricane coming. Right. Right. And it's still a huge chance it doesn't hit you, and people get kind of tired of of the the drill. I think right. What it was Rita. I mean, Rita made landfall. It just didn't make landfall in Houston. Which no, which was but we all more? thought it was going to make landfall yeah. in Houston, so it spun up this crazy sort of right reaction. And then it hit further north, and that's the nature of hurricanes, though, right? Is mm-hmm. they thought for th- three or four days, Houston was in the bullseye, and then it hit, was, it made landfall like fifty or sixty miles north. Oh, right, right, right. right. I just, I just and we, we didn't even a, rain at my house during Rita. Right, there's a picture of you guys because we were still in California, right. but like I think it was Rita. I always thought it was funny where like you boarded up the window and then did Rita, but like a, a line through it, like a Ghostbuster sign. Was that uh-huh. Rita? Or which? Well, it was, but <laughs> so I did that. <laughs> I did that not because I didn't want Rita to come. No, no, I know. It's because I I had cut custom boards to fit my windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they were like all my windows were labeled one, two, three, four. So board one went to bit to window one. Right. And so then I put like Rita. I, I put some stupid Rita thing in spray paint just to be funny. I thought it was super funny. I thought and it was then funny. and then Ike hit later, which was not far long after Rita, and so I had crossed out Rita to put the same thing for Ike. Got it. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's which Ike I, actually hit us. That was one of the pretty destructive yeah. hurricanes oh, yeah. to Houston. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's a that was a simple thing. So once again, the fact that you were you know were organizing some things is okay. I'm gonna pre-cut lumber. Right. And I'm going to label them, and they're mm-hmm. going to fit them onto my windows. And then I just, for okay, here's another for instance. Right. For us with fires, mm-hmm. we part of this is like I wish I could just give all my listeners the perfect A B C D E, and everybody was is good. The problem is um, so much thing. Uh, what's difficult about that is, well, like you said, hurricanes never. No, it two events are exactly the right. same. Exactly it's never right. the same. So we cover some bases, and what what I'm getting at is there's some amount of research that we're you're going to have to individually do about right. what your scenario is. Right. So I can't be like, oh, what you're in a hurricane? Well, then just do this, this, and this. Or what you're in a fire? Right. Just do this, this, and this. There, what we what Lee and I had done for our fire prone was we went through and we got enough duct tape you know, several rolls of mm-hmm. duct tape to put in our emergency kit mm-hmm. and plastic sheeting and cut to size plastic sheeting for every window mm-hmm. and every vent in the house so that if fire passed us but didn't come in the house and they wanted us because sometimes they'll make you stay, right? Um, that smoke wouldn't fill the house. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Or contaminants can't get into the house if, because that did happen where the fire was far enough away we didn't evacuate, but we were covered in smoke and soot. Right, right. And so what we did was, and everything got labeled, mm-hmm. this window, that window. And so you can do some homework, too, on some other ideas. I'm hoping I will give all the ideas I can come up with um, as they come and as we learn about them and as we, you know, because I'm on a journey of this. And Leah and I, we do, we are preppers and we're preparedness. But we're also on this journey, and I don't want to be fear-driven at all. I just want to mm-hmm. be practically driven. Right. And so that's awesome. Hey, just pre-cut some lumber. You got mm-hmm. however many sheets of plywood. Number one, number two, number three. Right. You already know they fit. You don't have to fight with it. You don't have to be mm-hmm. worried about it. Screw them on. You're good. Your yeah. windows are getting blown out. Yeah. And like you don't even screw them on. They make these little hurricane clips that literally fit right into the really plywood. And 
they're they, just kind of locked in place. They pressure fit into your window, yeah. And so you just keep a bag of those, and you keep your ply. It's you know, you just keep yeah, the plywood, the shatter, yeah, and, and whatever. And so that was something we did early on because, and, and you don't think about these things until mm-hmm. you're in a situation where you need to put plywood on your window, and everybody needs to put plywood on their window. And guess what? There's not enough plywood in the city to provide plywood. Two for days home. before when everybody's going to. That's exactly, to, and it's yeah. the same for food, right? Like Water, these are food, all the yeah. things you need to think about. All of all of the resources you would need mm-hmm. that aren't infinite right actually i'm really liking so i i like the idea that like once again i counsel and i'm like hey we need to cover some basic bases everybody needs water everybody needs food and everybody needs some amount of medical like everybody needs mm-hmm. that and i say you can't prepare for everything but you can kind of prepare for anything mm-hmm. okay what i mean by that is if you cover these basic bases you know make sure you this is much water you got stored up for your family right. this is much food you got stored up for your family whether that's short term or long term whatever it is like make sure you just got at least enough food for a week all of these things we're talking about, we were able to kind of pick back up after about right. a week. You know, it's not, I mean, yes, you had to, you were displaced from your home for longer than that, but grocery stores were, were back online <laughs> and things are within a week. But from after we cover these few bases, that's when we start looking at, all right, well, I live in a tornado pro, pro now, right. or I, what do I need now? What do I need to do beyond mm-hmm. this basic foundation to make sure that I am not a draw from a you know on a on a, once again just like you just said our friend isaiah's eyes were opened up dramatically and he was good in this freeze and he's mm-hmm. grateful and he called me to say thank you and he's on the podcast too um but when we were in a grocery store in redding up in california and he 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 was you know raised just city no preparedness minded at all like you live in the country you know country right. guy but so even just by virtue of being kind of country minded, you learn to be self sufficient and self reliant, and you're just a little less dependent on the overall system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this, but he grew up super city, and when I was like, okay, let's let's do the math right here, standing in the soda aisle, count how many people you can physically see with your eyes right now. And so he counted them up. I said, every one of those people grabs five gallons of water off this shelf right now. Mm-hmm. How much water's left on the shelf? And he's like, mm, half. Yeah, that's one minute. Mm-hmm. Not so, during a mad rush. Not during a mad yeah. rush. That's one minute. So now let's assume they have an entire another restock in the back mm-hmm. for all of this here. All of this water's gone in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. That's the reality. Right. So the reason we bring it up and the reason what I, you know, for you with these companies, like if we can get some bases covered, mm-hmm. then it's just less stressful. Right. Later on. When I really want to quick go back to something that you, do it, do it. you just passingly said, but mm-hmm. I think it's an important point um, where you, you, you said, you know, be prepared for anything. Right. Right. But so, not everything. We can't prepare every little teeny thing. So, exactly. Yeah. We can't prepare every detail. Right. But but what what you find when you start building plans for, say, a hurricane, like I build plans for hurricanes because that's pr- hurricanes and floods are tropical systems and we'll just call it tropical systems. Okay, cool. Yeah. Makes it easier. Um Principles have, still apply. Right. So having that in place, all of the things that we do for tropical systems almost completely applied across the board for the freeze. Right. So you'll find that a lot of things intersect. So having a plan that's tailor-made, say, for tropical systems mm-hmm. will also be able to be pulled and applied to other things. Right. So right. that is a it's it's a good statement to say be prepared everything because the system the system you're working can actually work in a broad general sense mm-hmm. and it's also that's why it's important to leave it as a living right because let's say 80 percent of it overlaps right that's 80 percent more covered you are than if you did nothing at all exactly if you, you know if we're preparing for this one type of thing mm-hmm. and that once again puts us in a position where most anything right. is within the scope of these things yeah. there's that, that be- much more capacity you have to deal with the things you weren't ready for right yeah. right so um I, I say that i i like that you you brought that up again i appreciate it because hopefully like i want to give anybody listening encouragement don't get hung up on like Oh, 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 well, I'm prepared for this, but I'm not prepared for that, and I'm Mm-mm. not prepared for this, and I'm but mm-hmm. I'm prepared for that, and then because I promise, I talk to preppers all day long. We have family members who are preppers that like to do this to just go down scenario rabbit holes, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, what about this and this and this and this then? Yeah, and I mean, not, it's easy to go down those holes. It, it, you know, it, right? It's easy, and, and at some level, it's probably not bad once you've reached a level. Don't. Right? What I'm saying is, don't worry. Don't stress yourself out no. over those things. Um, they're fun. Like they, sh- those should be fun mental exercises. That's yep. what those should be. Mm-hmm. 
that's all it's fun and i'm i'm not saying that they have no value they have lots and lots of value oh, yeah. but just getting our feet wet and just starting out and like oh i'm gonna form a plan don't worry about forming a plan for everything you think could go wrong mm-hmm. form once again well it's like a muscle right yeah and like you're 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 starting to exercise a muscle so you, you're not gonna burn it out right now you've got to build right. up to a certain strength level so sure. it's the same thing here you're you're developing this preparedness muscle yeah and so yeah you start where you can yeah and and i find that when you do it that way or when we do it that way it that's it's actually like less expensive it's a, more, a bit more organized mm-hmm. you you can wrap your brain around it a little easier um it doesn't have to be taboo talk it doesn't have mm-hmm. to be you know the zombies are coming or anything like that and right and so forming a plan or at least finding out you know making it people centered Mm -hmm. um, and then testing it right you know whatever it is well in between testing it i'm going to say um once again educating yourself on your area you know educating yourself on where you live what your evacuation point is going to be um we like to keep maps in our vehicles Mm -hmm. at all times of our general area Mm -hmm. because one like you said um, when the fires came through the electricity went down and the towers were gone because fire burned them up we weren't able to use gps of any kind Mm -hmm. leah likes to play little games like for the last six months she has basically not used her gps on on her phone Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. maps or ways to try to find some place she's literally breaking out maps to be like hey we just move we're here in waco yeah we we lived we knew northern california like the back of our hand right i hunted all of that you know the mm-hmm. the entire trinity county and shasta county there wasn't a nook or cranny that hadn't been to right it. i knew all the logging roads all of the back roads we could get in and out of anywhere but now that we're here she's like well i'm gonna just play some games with myself and the kids get involved and they're like we're trying to get to the library today and we got no map and we don't know how to get there so i'm just or mm-hmm. we not mm-hmm. no map we have no gps on the phone we're just gonna try to get there. <laughs> the map right so she does those practices for fun but yeah yeah and yeah. Uh, but that's part of testing right it is it yeah it is and that's you know that's a i think it's a fun exercise and that's something we've done but again right, right. my but wife you know you my wife's know, a third generation houstonian uh, you know that like, like the back yeah there. like we're pretty good right i feel like we're pretty good that's why we're doing it here we didn't have to do it up right. there actually mm-hmm. To be actually, I take that back. There were a couple of times where we did just load the family up and we're like, "Hey, we're taking this weekend to drive these other roads I've never been down before." Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, do that, but we also did that for just family entertainment. Like, what's out here? We'd find cool little hole in the wall, you know, restaurants to go to, right. and, and some country store we'd never heard of before. We 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 did that mm-hmm. often, right. Right. Um, but that was kind of part of right. our our action plan. Was, you know, it's a good family. Uh, this is a good family trip, right? It's a good family. One hundred percent and cheap. I yeah. mean, it's gas. California gas so, but could go wrong with that, right? And it, but it was kind of part of the greater greater plan as well. Where okay, well, this is a, you know mm-hmm. more than one bird, one stone mm-hmm. kills more two birds, one stone. Two birds, one stone. Um, yeah. By doing this, not only are we having fun, we're getting uh, going on an adventure, yeah. but then we're learning about the area. So you yeah. can make it fun games and things like that. But not that you did that with the company, so no, <laughs> no, <laughs> we didn't do that with the company. <laughs> It's some sort of team it was building. Pretty, pretty serious. No, exactly. Well, fire drills are serious. All of those right. are serious. Right. Um, and and another thing I like I like to take away from the fact that you did this is to give it basically gives um, forethought validity, mm-hmm. right? The fact that you were you you built these plans, mm-hmm. um, it, it gives the idea that like hey of be of giving forethought of, of, of forming a plan blah blah is that is it's a valid point for safety sake for mm-hmm. um well and it, i don't it just i guess makes it eat i, I, I don't know how to say how it makes it easier on the back end it's never easy but why make it worse than it has to be right and yeah. so is, what are some of the um also what like i know one of the philosophies or the uh, the the motivating one was people focused people focused um well people focused and then and then, and like and then asset protection. As, yeah, yeah, asset. Yeah, asset focused. Right. Right. And, and I'm going to so, equate that to like our own stuff. Well, my house. My right. Career. Right. Yeah. So for me, in 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 the business, right. it's the physical space. So it's it's the office. So there literally was a checklist just for my team mm-hmm. to go through the building, and step one, step two, all had to be executed before anybody could leave the building. Mm-hmm. You know, and it just it's mundane stuff we would wrap all the computers in plastic and we would take everything away from a window and stick it inside and 
two days before, we'd ask anybody who had super sensitive material in cabinets to mark them so that we could put them in interior. Right. You know, it's just sensible things to preserve and protect assets, right? Because windows get broken, water comes water in, comes wind, in things, wind blows things you know. around you. Um, and so that's the practical application. And so if you, you know, you take it and you put it to your home. We talked about, I put boards in my windows. Right. Um, I'm now on 11 acres of land mm -hmm. and we learned a huge lesson during Harvey. We never in a million years thought that 53 inches of water would come out of the sky and come out of the ground, sky right? and land in our property in right. less than four days. Um, we did a lot of work beforehand to get ready. Um, right. We, you know, cause we are prepared people, you know, we have livestock. We can't just leave to chance. Right. Lifestyle. You know, I'm drawing we, a line between like doomsday scenario preppers and actionable prepared emergency preparedness minded people. Right. Yeah. So we had to we had to stop and think like what are we going to do with these cars cuz this is more water than we think we're going to get and we don't want to lose our cars. Well, that's high ground over there. Just, Let's take the cars and tractors and stick them over there and hope for the best. Right. 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 And that's what we did and and it was the right call, right? Like the cars were pretty far away, but they weren't flooded. <laughs> right. And and we built the houses the houses were all built up except for the one I was living in because it was pre-existing and it wasn't. No, it was I a storm know. Ready. The, the, but the, the other house originally to, to later on build a house and you right. were just using this one. To, right. 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 It's temporary dwelling. Right. Um, and so those got built up. And actually, the builder for my in-laws' house. Um, so it's it's eleven acres and there's three houses. It's my wife and I and then my in-laws and then my sister-in-law. Um, their builder happened to have or order more dirt than they needed for their their foundation for their pad mm -hmm. and they we just want us to make it a foot higher like, wait, yeah just make it a foot higher then like right, right. like, like in, at the time it's just like sure why sure not? nobody's thinking like yeah foot higher is safer like higher is always going to be safer in flood zones right and it turned out to be the right the right call right yeah. you know and i think they spent a little bit extra because it cost a little extra to dump yeah, the but dirt, water but didn't enter their home no no it was about two feet from the front door right mm-hmm and we all stayed in that home. It was a life raft because it was three feet of water all around us. Yeah, I know we have a lot to conversation right. about <laughs> all, all the, the, the 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 things of the you know surrounding area right. there. But regardless, Houston was underwater. Like, <laughs> yes. yes, Houston was underwater. So right. okay, so like you said, number one. So Good. so people focused. Yes, building uh, asset focus. I guess we can call it the best thing to call it because I mm -hmm. think yeah, of yeah. these things and business terms i guess you want to call mm -hmm, it but mm -hmm. you know you know, think about your house and your land what, and, no matter how big or small yeah yeah like even if you're in an apartment you want to think about actually let's do that let's equate just real quick how can people who live in an apartment or a small space or an apartment um uh take what skyscrapers and people in offices do and implement like say for evacuation plans mm -hmm. or things like that because that's a whole different set of you know we have our own individual independent homes on either small lots or right. land these folks in apartments now are contending with being stacked up kind of like offices are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and what are some things they can do or they could maybe that might equate from office you know right. type living like you said so what are some actionable just it, well windows are dangerous Right. Right. And I think in any situation, tornadoes, hurricanes, fires, windows, is, that's a danger point. That's right. a, that's probably the weakest part in a house mm -hmm. in any structure. So find the strongest point, And that is your muster point for your family. Right. Right. right? And then figure out the most important things you need with each other during the event and right. then after the event. And you figure out a way to make that portable and easy to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Like, and if you have children, you need to figure out how to get them to understand where they need to be. You need to think about what you're going to do with these kids. Actually, I like that, especially right? like, let's say in my mind right now, I'm imagining, you know, what's the apartment dwellers? Because the reason I'm going to do a whole thing on it, because I just mm -hmm. had two people ask, hey, what about apartment? Like start beginning, mm -hmm. but we're apartment dwellers. Um, if you depend on an elevator, sometimes just take the stairs. Well, so... And learn what they're like and where right. they go. And, I, and that was actually going to be sort of my next point is okay, the strongest okay. point in most dwellings or buildings is the stairwell. Is it? Yes. So, and so it, in, in all buildings, it's the stairwell. Stairwells in in high rise buildings specifically um, function as evac routes, mm -hmm. but also they get pressurized. So if there's a fire, the fire doesn't go into the stairwell. 
and all the smoke gets sucked out. So it's the safest place to get around. No way. Okay, yeah. wow, that's cool. So like when a fire alarm goes off in a building and you go to the stairwell, you'll notice it's really hard to open the door. Oh, because a vacuum happens. Yeah, because right? they create a vacuum in there. Right. Yeah. So stairwells are generally the strongest place in the house. Uh, or in the building. Right? Yeah, in the yeah, building. In the building. Uh, interior bathrooms tend to be, like in a house or an apartment, they tend to be the strong. They have the most wood surrounding them. Right, right. right. They're just the most robustly built part of the house. So those are good places, you know, especially like if you're thinking tornadoes or hurricanes and hurricane spin off tornadoes. Right. You can get a small mattress and get everybody into a tub and put it over you while it's happening. And if things start to break around you, I, I suppose in an earthquake, that's probably pretty gonna, good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Under you know, doorways, yeah. um, things like that, it, specifically right. bathroom, um, you know, hallway structures. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did not know. That the strongest part of the building and the, the, the vacuum thing. So if you're in an apartment, you're trying to evacuate. Um, yeah. Well, the elevators won't work. They're not going to work. They're not going to work. And the reason they're not going to work is it, usually it's not loss of power. Usually they get put on some generator system. The mm-hmm. reason they don't work is because the fire department needs to be able to take them over. Oh. Right. So in a fire situation. If they're operating. Well, in a fire situation in a building, they're probably operating. What happens is when the fire alarm goes off, every elevator automatically goes recall to first floor and they lock out. And then the fire department has a special key that they override because the fire department uses the elevators to get up and down. And I'm sure it's probably the same the same stuff in an apartment that that you have up and down elevators. I'm I'm not going to commit that this is how every city runs it, but this is how it works in Houston. Okay, got it. This is. so find out, you know, find right. that out. Find, know, yeah, and these, are, you know, these are good questions to ask. Yeah. Um, but when you're also um, testing your plan, you take your 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 family, your children, or your friends or, or neighbors, and mm-hmm. walk up and down the stairs. You know, to sometimes do that to get into that the practice or at least the understanding of right. what it's like to take the stairs and where they go, right. where they lead, which doors lead what. You know, yeah. it's it's easy to get confused. Um, in a stressful situation and you know, all of a sudden you exit the wrong floor right. or you exit at the basement or something like that. Um, but if you're already familiar with it, you can go into kind mm-hmm. of that uh, backup right. mode, you know. So, and I actually want to backtrack a little bit on do apartments. It. Do um, it. I, the first thing you should do when you get an apartment is ask the landlord what their fire evac plan is. Ooh. Ask them what their emergency response plan is for hurricanes. They should have one. And especially, really? especially, they should, should if, yeah, if should. they're doing a good job, um, I ask them or pressure them for one. Right. Right. And if, cause if they don't have one, they should have one. They're in some level responsible for the life inside that building. Um, so they should have something They, you like in Houston, I believe by law, they have to have a fire evac plan posted somewhere. Um, but like you get into an apartment and you want to think about a plan, the best place to start is to go ask your landlord yeah what's the plan what should i be doing right right and the and and, and i know because some of the apartments that we lived in when we were a kid or younger or whatever i remember you know and i'm specifically right now I'm talking about some of the ones that are like the enclosed style apartment where you know the apartments are like the doors mm-hmm. are inside of the building but then right. there are the others where the stairs just lead you know you got one two three mm-hmm. four doors but i now remember some apartments would have a fire extinguisher right there in between the two yeah you know um, and, but I never asked them. It never came right. up. It ne- right. it you kinda, don't think about like if yeah. you go to a hotel and you're staying for a couple of nights, do you ask them at the front desk? What happens if there's a fire in here tonight? Right. Right. People don't do it. No, it, yeah. but if you look hard enough, you'll probably find a something on yeah, a wall a by an elevator. Do this. Yeah. yeah. Or like a fire egress route. On right. printing on a placard or something. Right. These are just things to look for, right? And like these are good start off points for it you is. to think about your own plan. Another small, teeny tiny point, though, when we were talking about fire fire extinguishers, I've recently learned through our brother Chris, who's a safety mm-hmm. guy and all these other safety trainees. They're not for do. fighting fires. They're not for fighting nope. fires. No, they for are not. everybody listening right now, do fire not fight fires with them. They are for getting out alive. They are for getting out alive. They are to clear your way to get yourself safe. Yes. Right. So, and once again, so apartments in your own home, right. uh, at, at your company, right. you know, it's, let's say your company doesn't do what Matt did uh, and, and implement good, good policies. Hey, mm-hmm. hit HR up, 
You right. know, say, hey, let's yeah. let's let's form let's form a plan yeah. and let's educate each other on. I did not know until a year ago, or yeah, whatever a year ago, that fire extinguishers were not for fighting fires. Yeah. They're not designed to do it. That's not their purpose. They are literally there to temporarily subdue fire to get you away from it. That's right. Period. Mm-hmm. That's all they're for. They're not for. Well, they're not for extinguishing fires. Mm-hmm. Like they, they they're. They are a safety precaution to get you out alive. That's right. And so if you're standing there trying to fight fire with it, you're it's, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Yeah, because yeah, they don't, there's not the enough in them. No, to your do number that. one goal in a fire should be to get yourself save, out of the save fire, yourself and other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to say that too because right. I had no idea, mm-hmm. and no other company besides this, well, got hand some some of the oil, this oil company mm-hmm. taught me that. Yeah, I did that was know. part of our training package, which at is the awesome. energy company. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's to educate yourself about some of the individual yeah. components of, uh, you know, because yeah. all fighting. high rise buildings in Houston by code have to have a certain amount of um, fire extinguishers. I think it's by square feet mm-hmm. and they have to be inspected annually. And if well, they're yes, not, you're not in sure. compliance, right? And you're going to get right, fired. right. The, I mean, there's right. code and all that yeah. regulation. So there's uh, fire, like you probably haven't even seen them if you're in a high rise building. They're usually embedded by a door. Mm-hmm. Look I mean, for them by a stairwell door. Yeah, yeah. And if, you, if you live in a, like an apartment where they don't have them because you're not one of those internal structures, but you're more just like a like like my my sister in law, their apartment is actually more like a um, I don't know, like a duplex or condo right, kind, of, right. kind of a thing, um, you know, and you buy your own. Don't mm-hmm. try to put out the fire. Just right. get yourself away mm-hmm. and make sure you call nine one one and make sure you are safe. Mm-hmm. I've had other friends who are like they they went to evacuate fire and they're grabbing everything under the sun and I'm like. Get out of here. Right. That stuff's all insured in my <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, but they're and and which brings me to another, another point personally, not for the company, but that's why we implement having an in case of emergency box. Some people right. say do a bug out bag or a bug in bag or a this or a that. Mm-hmm. No, we have our in case of emergency box. Mm-hmm. And if I'm forced to evacuate, I can live out of it or if we're forced to live in our home, mm-hmm. but it's got sensitive documents in it, right. copies of them. It's got vacuum mm-hmm. seal, a small amount of vacuum seal cash in it. Mm-hmm. Um, it has uh, so it has food in it, has medical mm-hmm. in it, has ways to purify water right. in it. And it's just an emergency box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and. When I said earlier, if the muster point in your house mm-hmm. during a hurricane or a yeah. tornado is the bathroom or under the stairwell, yeah, and you're collecting things to take under there for safekeeping, that's one of the things you're taking with you. We yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah, because um, we have a similar box and it's 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 document heavy. It's right. it's our insurance papers, uh, it's, it's, m- it's our mortgage, mortgage our information, yeah. our marriage. Yeah, it's the things I'm going to need to get life back in order. Right. Really important phone numbers. Yes. Uh, there are some keepsakes in there that are very special to us yeah. that we couldn't, you know, it would be really hard for us to lose. Right. And that's okay to have those things. Um, you know, but other things, you know, like uh, the food, the water, all that. Even yeah. a hand crank radio is one of the things that's on our hurricane prep list. There you go. Hand crank radio with a flashlight. That should be on a fire, tornado, right. that's hurricane. On, that should be on every prepared list. Heat wave, right. drought, all of mm-hmm. them. A, 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 a an emergency radio because yeah, that's how you're going to get your information right what's going on outside because cell phones go down easy yeah i, I mean yeah. i know we like them and we're dependent on them and, and well, they, we do we, everything with them we would also i have you know because they do go down but they don't like they didn't go down during harvey we had cell phones the entire time you well, i thought you said texting no we had full cell phone use during <laughs> harvey the entire time <laughs> yeah yeah. We had all that we, water. We, I had we, no idea. Yeah, we were lucky. We never lost power and we never lost cell phone. You know, and that's not true for the whole city, but for right. us, it's true. And so if you're one of those people that find yourself in an emergency situation, but you have cell phone use, but maybe no power, like we found ourselves with the freeze, we have portable battery chargers. I have three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of them would do five charges and the other two will do two charges. Right. Full charges on your cell phone. And honestly, when the power's out, it becomes your lifeline. Right. You know, it's how you're going to get information. It's how you're going to contact your your power supplier or whoever's managing your grids. It's going to how you're going to look at the emergency management departments for your local governments. Um, yeah. Right. The, it, it's going to be your connection, you know, and so you're going to need to have access to information. And so it's important to keep those things alive. Charge. So, yeah, right. some battery backup charges and things yeah. like that. Especially if you're going to go the no generator route, which we don't recommend. Right. Um, right. You know, at least have that. They're really, really inexpensive. So, 
Right. Yeah. Actually, one of the companies I work for gave gave me mm-hmm. some. You know, everyone I own came from a company I work for. Safety. The yeah. safety guys gave them to me. Yeah. 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 But that's part of the plan, right? Like that was a recognition at one of the companies I worked at was they need to keep their cell phones going because we got a business to run and we're putting people on the road and right. Um, you know, who knows when they're going to have access to power? So give them these. Mm-hmm. So that they can at least keep, you know, they keep their family informed. They keep the business informed. So we right. gave them out to every employee. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, once again, just to recap, we'll, we'll wind it up here in a little bit because I think we'll, otherwise we'll just keep talking all night. But right. um, is is it's okay to talk about having a plan. Mm-hmm. It's people focused. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to test this plan but after you're educated yourself so, or well, educate yourself, educate on, yourself your, yeah. on your own personal not niched well it is a niche but it, what, whatever the dangers are within right. your where you right. live and i don't care cold wet whatever whatever those are and then from there educate yourself yeah. on things and that you can do real, real quick on the education yeah. part just resource wise because mm-hmm. like you could get on the internet and go down rabbit hole after rabbit hole right right for sure so i where i would start and mm-hmm. we've used these as resources like for the city of houston and a lot of the surrounding cities they have very good emergency management websites houston does your yeah. local so because it's it's a it's a a reality of living in houston right, right. bad weather right. it's a reality right um and so the office of emergency management for the city of houston which has its own website so check that for your area check the, it for your area just google that Go, yeah usually has they have some sort of template for a plan mm-hmm. they usually have good checklists they have evac routes already put on maps um, and they have emergency phone numbers in case you need help. Like right. all of these things are there, and it's there is simply a but you know American Red, Cro- Red Cross. Red Cross. Yeah, it's it's you know you you print most of these things are printable. Right, easy so, to read flyers. So I'm with you. Check your city and see if mm-hmm. they've got a local emergency preparedness mm-hmm. plan that you can steal from. Right. Number one. Number two. Um, I prefer the Red Cross's one over FEMA, but the both of them are available, and they right. both actually do have good information yes. on them. They mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Um, it's not exhausted by any means. It is a starting point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, hey, it's going to get you started on uh, – so FEMA, uh, American Red Cross, uh, and then there are a, a number of other um, – one of the books I really like is a – so I recommend this book. I'll do a whole review on it. Is um, it was – it should be right over there. Shit, I can't remember. Anyway, it um, Discovery Channel. It's a Discovery Channel – channel pre- emergency preparedness book right and what i really like about that book is it's not doomsday it's literally emergency preparedness related from real world scenarios right. that actually happen to people mm-hmm. they tell their stories in it and then they give good actionable real simple information right. free of paranoia and then free of like make sure you have a thousand rounds stored up right like it, it's yeah. good actionable emergency preparedness this is this is where i want people to start if, if anybody wants to go into awesome prepared prep prepper right. stuff that's fine yeah do that i'm uh, the, you're yeah we're not just, saying no yeah but the also best part about this stuff mm-hmm. is it's free it's not gonna it cost you a dime right to pull that up on the internet and apply it to your life right and what we'll do too is um if you on here in a little bit i'll get with Matt and I will write up kind of just an archaic, our own version of what we do here, maybe in our homes, just mm-hmm. for basic checklists. I already have, if you go on our website, reasonablyprepared.com, there's a little thing that says, in case of emergency, reason prepared checklist, mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. like that. And what that is, is that's everything that we put in our ICE, in case of emergency box. Right. Um, and we've gotten that from, and, and some of what goes in the box are printouts from American Red Cross right. f- for our area. So mm-hmm, some of those mm-hmm. are what going there. Um, so you can download that for free. That's mm-hmm, absolutely free. Mm-hmm. And Matt and I will work on building an emergency preparedness plan, just an, uh, just basically an architecture for you to write in your own your own information. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I know that you've built that for people before. So we're, we'll offer that and we'll put that up on the website as soon as we're able to. Um, right. You can email me directly. We'll try and get that to you. But right now, you can go to emer- reasonablyprepared.com, scroll to the bottom of the screen, and there's a, an ICE emergency preparedness checklist. Download it for free. Give me your email so I know who to send it to. It's just a PDF. And then from there, you can start checking off. And then I want to build with you mm-hmm. um, um, an emergency preparedness plan right checklist right there are other places to get them and some other people have them um 
But I'd like to just offer mm-hmm. one on our website as well, and we'll yeah. put that together so that you can just write in, you know, what it is yours and, and what it is you already have, and what it is mm-hmm. you need, and what we recommend. Right. That you just some basic things you make sure right. have so you can do that. Um, but right. as always, Matt, do you want to you want to actually finish? So you finish. T- testing would be the next. Oh, did I not finish? The no, thing? we, we oh, didn't finish. Damn, I do all the time. Yeah. Okay, hold on. So testing. Testing is the next. Right. Right. And. Uh, this is really, Sorry about that. really important. Uh, the company that I ended up in that, that did this really well, they did it really well because every year we had a, we had a full budget to do this and f- full support from the executive team. Right. We literally shut the business down for an entire weekend. We would... A, a whole a weekend? Or? It was a weekend. So what we would do is most companies have a, a BCDR site, which is far away from their actual building right okay so our our headquarters were located in houston but dallas was where our bcdr site was and it was dallas because we had um we had some backup server stuff at a Mm -hmm. a colo and so we were able to you're able to go into that particular facility and manipulate the network right and so that became that became our bcdr site and so once a year we would get there Friday morning and by Friday evening we would literally we we would literally have a meeting on a phone as if we were having a real emergency and the building was shutting down oh wow like no power losing everything yeah and we would we would say okay lights are out power's out network's going down we're drilling this we go or you actually drilled it yeah yeah we go and so they start flipping switches on the stuff in Houston you could do it access it remotely from where we were and they start failing everything over to the Dallas location. Okay. And then we spend all night making sure systems work, like everything's up and running. Right. From our end. When you say systems work, you mean like computer systems or you mean like network? Oh, so this particular company, you know, obviously like the company network, but we also hosted things for clients on I'll just make right. sure you mean like the systems we have in place to evacuate or something like that. No, no, okay. computer okay. systems. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but the, the people part of it came the next day Mm -hmm. where we would actually test how well we did the night before in the failover and we would enact our actual people plan, which is we would have a designated number of people across the company log in and try and test the systems, Mm -hmm. right. To make sure nothing was failing. But then we also would test the, the people side of it, which is everybody, so it was a top-down thing. So I was a manager of five people. So it was my job to contact all my five people and Make tell sure my good. boss, but anybody who was under me that had people under them, right? So it was this, it's a call tree, we called it. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so you literally, everybody in the company got called the next day to wow. make sure that they were okay. Yeah. Right? And like, we know where Tom is. Right? And, Tom's good. And then the message is, if this were a real emergency, this is what you would be doing right now. Right. Right. And then that night we put everything back and then we drive home on Sunday. That's amazing. So, and it happened every year. And usually the scenario we played out was a hurricane because For that's... For you guys, yeah, yeah. Because like even in a flood situation, it's simply don't come to work today. You will, will not probably make it in. Right. There's too much water. But we never had to shut down the company. Like the building had a generator and we weren't going to lose power. So... um so it's usually hurricane focused for us. For, yeah. But, so this company did it. And I can tell you, I was with that company for five years and we ran that thing five times and every single time was successful. Mm-hmm. Everything, everything generally worked as it should, but every single time we found something we could do better. Which in and of itself is success. Right. Yeah. And the even biz- bigger success is you would put all of the people who were on that team in a room with all the executives, and then there's no hierarchy at that point in the room. There's only how do we make ourselves better? Right. Right. There's nobody, there's not this, you know, you did this wrong, you're in trouble. Right. That right. didn't work right. It's not that. It's this needs to be improved upon. How are we going to improve it? This needs to be, and, yeah. and it's a constant level of how do we collectively make ourselves better at this? And it's the same thing in your house. Run your test. Right. Right. Figure out what works really well. Figure out what doesn't work so well. 
and just figure out how to make yourself better. You know, we're not scolding for no. failing to do something. Right. We're going, oh, we did all these great, but these things were kind of weak and let's mm. let's 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 let's, uh, let's strengthen this. Right. Or actually, we're, there were one or two things we found out were completely unnecessary. Like we had them in in our plan mm-hmm. for fire evacuation, mm-hmm. unnecessary. We, right. Like didn't even need to. Yeah, do you'll it. find you'll find that. Like, you know. and you're gonna just fine tuning this. Right. And it's like you said, it's the point. Well, it's we're gonna keep ourselves safe and alive. Mm-hmm. Priority number one. Priority number two, we've already thought about this so that as the hiccups come, because they're going to come, mm-hmm. you're you're in a mental place to to deal with them right. appropriately. And then when the event is over, you're set up for success in the aftermath. Right. Because most events aren't over when the event's over. There's right, always right. aftermath. Well, yeah, the cleanup or the... Yeah. You know the the devastation of what mm-hmm. just happened. Yeah. It's realized, right? Yeah. And then the best part about it for me is this: if you've done it well, and you will do it well if you get you a good plan it. and you test it and you do these things, the people who haven't been able to do it around you, you'll be able to help them. My biggest mantra, right? Like, so i think heb is a huge example of this and for anybody who's listening not in texas heb is a massive grocery store chain down here in texas and they're legit awesome and they they do this really really well they do disaster recovery and emergency management management sorry better than most companies i've seen they do it really well they're exceptional at it yes and they're so good at it they're able to go into markets they don't even have stores and help people and they do that they're like the always the first on the ground right it's amazing yeah, <laughs> yeah. so in the community it's like well at least heb and we're talking semi yeah, trucks going to be there full mm-hmm. of provisions yeah. to go in and aid and help yeah S- that they dispatch and, yeah. and serve communities at yeah. large that are just at the ready yeah and because they do that really well they have two very loyal customers that, right Dude, you know what i mean like uh, man, and they're not even paying you to say this stuff I've but it's for right. HGB. <laughs> but it's this it's the same thing in your house like if you do it really well right and so and it is a good example we have some friends who live in a local neighborhood we live on 11 acres but there's a neighborhood near us and they're they're friends and we we sort of met them about a year ago and they're not from the united states they're they're from south africa okay and we met them because my son and their son are best friends. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. they're, you know, wonderful people and we're, we're becoming friends very well. Um, and they're just, they're not used to the weather here. Mm-hmm. They, you know, don't necessarily understand the shifts. Not to say that they're resistant to being prepared for anything. They're very open to it. Right, right. Um, but there's a difference between understanding something right. and being resistant. Yeah. Plus, when you're trying to immigrate to a company, you know, country and... The, their priorities right now are placed somewhere else. They're very focused on getting citizenship, mm-hmm. and you know he's obviously he works a lot, and um, they didn't have a generator, right? Right, and we have a generator, and it just so happened that there were times where I had power, and so the generator was at their house, and we were back and f- our generator floated ping, back and forth, ping ponged back right, and forth. Right. But, multiple times it was two three times a day and i had the resource and it worked and it right right and they didn't and i was able to share that with them you know in their house with six people in it right and so wow yeah yeah. and so like having heat and three young kids are are part of that right and keeping the friends going to the and then a mother you you know and then a mother who's you know oh yeah yeah, it's keeping the bragging. fridge going. It's, it's not like, bragging. No, but like it's a reality. Keeping those this family warm and their food safe and their food viable to eat is important, right? It is, and it's yeah. and, it, and they weren't and, and you don't look at it and go, well, they weren't prepared. They're terrible we people, and right. they, you know they don't they don't deserve my help. Like that's not the right like. No, but when we <laughs> serve in that way, when we serve, it 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 promotes the idea of preparedness in a. Um, in a much more gracious and loving way mm-hmm. than just you should be doing or you you should or shouldn't be doing something. You know, it's the same thing. We had people living in our home during the mm-hmm. home freeze, and they they were like, "Hey, this is awesome. Yeah. What you guys have done. How yeah. can we do this? Right. Well, and and it, then it becomes once again an act of service as opposed yeah. to a finger pointing of I said it before, and and I've heard 
I have had friends in other states who have used this type of terminology. I've got my shit sucks to be you. I mean, I, I, yeah, that, I don't like that. That attitude just, it's not a sustainable, it's, it's not sustainable in an emergency, right? right? Yeah. Or in extreme it, scenarios, I'm just going to go around and take from everybody else. I'm like, you won't live long probably, but you know, and, and I'm not trying to even go in the direction of the conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to make the point that serving one another in our communities mm-hmm. is the best way to be people focus is preparedness. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and well, for, that's how you form a plan. That many hands make light work. That's a true statement. So yep. when you're banded together, you're able to solve problems together right. easier. So, you know, we were banded together with them. And at some point, because he was using the generator mm-hmm. and he wasn't ready to for generator and we were sort of burning through gas because it was being used double more than we thought it was right we had to go find gas so he and i went out together to go find find the one gas station in the 20 mile radius that was open and had gas right 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 and which is also another like we can some of those specifics we can talk like but like it creates an environment where you're pooling resources and you're helping each other and the task then becomes easier right yeah and and you start considering what can I do, not what can't I do. Like, mm-hmm. oh, what I what I don't have, what I don't right. have. Well, what can we do then? Yeah. You know, and there are other ways. You know, let's say with generator, you can mm-hmm. have a propane conversion kit, so you have gasoline and you. Well, right, right. Yeah, there's all kinds of little nitpicks we could do, mm-hmm. and those are all good information. I want us right. to all learn that. Um, but philosophically, as far as the podcast is concerned, I'm really enjoying the uh, people focused. Uh, educate yourself on your, you know, where your mm-hmm. your own personal area. Practice your plan right. or. Test. I actually, I really like testing it. I, yeah. I always tell people practice, practice as if, mm-hmm. you know, like when I'm playing guitar, we're playing, I right, practice right, as practice. if, you know, practice as if we're, we're playing in front, but it's also as far as a plan is concerned, mm-hmm. testing yeah. that plan because you don't know 100% what's going to work unless you put it to the test. Right. Yeah. And we know now, my wife and I know, Lee and I know now that the plan that we originally had for mm-hmm. fire did not work. Right. Because we never tested it. Right. The other thing, though, with testing isn't just you're working out kinks. You're building muscle memory. For sure. Right. So when it does happen, like when we did eventually get a hurricane and I was at this company and we had to fail the company over because Harvey hit, Mm -hmm. I actually couldn't get to the point, to to the failover spot. I couldn't get to Dallas because I was flooded in. Right. I couldn't leave my house. But the... The plan was so well rehearsed right. that one of my employees stepped in and went for me because her house was fine the whole time. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so at some point in the process, like four days in, I had to drop off the team because at some point it's like my house is going away. I have to figure this out. I can't be at right, work. Right? right. Right. And that's another people focus version of the plan is what happens when the people you depend upon for certain things aren't capable of right. performing Something their happens, duties. Yeah. Right. So that's a, a consideration. So cross training, things like that mm-hmm. had to take place. Right. So like I always had my team lead sit in on any meeting I had with BCDR, whether it was, you know, we would sit down with individual teams and we would talk about their plan. Mm-hmm. It was an, it was an annual thing and we did it like two months before we ran the test. And so we would sit down with the heads of each team and say, okay, this is what your plan said last year. This is what we learned last year. These are the changes we made. Are there any updates you want to make based on your organization? Mm-hmm. Right. And we make those updates. So yeah. um, m- my team lead sat in on every single one of those calls, every single one of those meetings, so that when she had to go, because I couldn't, she was she jumped right, right there, in. Ready yeah. to go. Yeah. She didn't need me. Right. All, right. All my communications were in template form. You know, all she had to do was fill in some dates and times and mm-hmm. information. So, um, yeah, it's it's about building muscle memory and knowing it so well that it can just be executed, and then making sure that that's funny you, you say that because you know, in, in the '90s, uh, a fire came through Northern California called the Fountain Fires, and my mm-hmm. boss, where I was, he and his wife, and they lost their home in that fire. Yeah. And he he tells he, me and Leah this story of what happened. Him and his kid were in Reading. His excuse me, his wife and their son were in Reading, which w- w- was far enough away from the fire they weren't affected by being burned a lot, burned up. But their home was up in the Round Mountain burning area where the fire was ravaging through. Right, and he panicked. 
and panicked and he like just started grabbing stuff because the fire's coming over the hill. He tells his story. To see him tell it is amazing because he kind of relives it almost. Oh, yeah. And he's telling the story. But the long the long and short of it is he grabbed all of this stuff and then went to this the point. No cell phones in this day. They had never talked about anything. Well, once the fire, once he reunited with his family, his wife was like, why did you, <laughs> why didn't, what she said, why didn't you do this, this, and this? And he's like, I had no idea I was supposed to do that, that, and that. You always do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's not, you, like, that's, you always yeah. do that. I didn't know I had to go play A, B, C, and D because mm-hmm. you always take care of that. Mm-hmm. And so understanding what he, like, I'm not talking about generals or anything. I'm just no, saying, but look, we all fall into a natural rhythm, right? right of exactly. things in our yeah. in our you know in our relationships or whatever. Yeah, there's a natural rhythm where some people are more apt to do this thing, and so, right, and it sort of goes that way. But it's important to it's, talk, it's full circle. To, to right, it's important to understand, like, yeah. I, listen, it's important to understand how to start a fire. Well, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, it, these things are important to know for everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, it's cross training. For, absolutely, which yeah. once again, I think it does bring. I, I, I'd done this a minute ago to try and end, but you kept it on task with like, okay, we need to we need to test that plan, and then once you test it, um, to go once again full full circuit to, mm-hmm. it's okay to talk about this stuff, like yeah. have conversations about who you know how uh, responsibility this dele- gets delegated. So if I have an understanding that you mm-hmm. typically do A, B, and C, mm-hmm. well, if you're not there, then I know A, B, and C needs to get done. Right. Right, but mm-hmm. if I don't even know, no different than my buddy mm-hmm. or my boss, who was like, "That just always," I didn't realize, and she was like, "Well, I always do this, this, mm-hmm. and this." I didn't know you do that, that, well, and that. Look, hey, Harvey. Yeah, Harvey hit Friday night. Mm-hmm. I was in Connecticut Thursday night. I wasn't supposed to come home until Saturday morning. I was in Connecticut for work, and I had to beg, borrow, and steal to get. To get home. Yeah, all of us that were in Connecticut from Houston, we had to just do whatever we could. And I hopped a 5 a.m. flight from Connecticut to Houston just to get home by, you know, lunchtime. Wow. And so my wife and my in-laws were out of town, right? So um, they were coming back in from out of town. And uh, my wife had to... Hunker down the hatches. Yeah. 11 acres of stuff with livestock. She had to start to work on that. Right, because there's a garden, the livestock, the houses, more than one home on the The barn, all of the equipment... 100% 100% barn right. equipment mm-hmm. um, to, just to give perspective there's you you have like a a living breathing working uh family farm kind right. of a thing right? right which is awesome which mm-hmm. we love your your property but mm-hmm. um and you've got three distinct families you got your sister-in-law your mother probably all living on this property and hunkering down it's basic i mean chickens right. garden mm-hmm. tractors barns houses cars like you said car- mm-hmm well, we also, it's a party space, right? So we have... It's, a, it's we, an event venue. I'm it's an event, it. yeah. We have a lot of stuff hanging around that we use lighting and yeah, yeah. seating and like it all had to be put somewhere where it wouldn't be blown away or float away. Yeah. So the, yeah. being in constant communication and open uh, conversation about the, you know, the typical, I, I don't want to say roles that we play, but the things that we do, you know, my Leah does different things in the house than I do when I'm at work. I, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so understanding what she, understanding, you know, uh, any of those things are all important to know what specifically in your absence, what needs to be done. If I don't mm-hmm. even know, and I'm not, and I'm ignorant to mm-hmm. it, then it's not going to get done and it's going to continue to compound a problem. Yeah. Look, and I remember very clearly, like it was stressing her out, you know, and, yeah, and for three and a half hours or whatever that plane ride is, I'm untouchable. Right. And so before whatever in the morning it was, and the night before, I'm just you know you just get done what you can get done. Like if we lose chairs, we lose chairs. Right. That's not the most important thing. You know, it actually. So that right now I'm just thinking about it in real time. You saying that too? When you test it, it actually gives you actionable feedback on what's actually important and what isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, you're like, okay, they're just chairs. In right. the moment when you're panicking, you're like, oh, my chairs are blowing away. Mm-hmm. But if you drill it, if you test it, if you put it to the test, it helps you compartmentalize and prioritize yeah. what's what's actually... What's important. What's important, what isn't yeah. important, yeah. yeah get, getting the chickens taken care of and figuring out what they're going to do right. through this event. I remember Harvey, yeah. Harvey didn't just make landfall and leave. Right. It turned around, went out the ocean, came back and hit us again. Yeah, and I say that to say this. To, All right, to, to so we had four days of what do we do with these chickens. Oh, holy moly. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, but it helps put in perspective, um, okay, these chairs are blowing away. Sometimes we, when we panic, we, we major on minors. And we're like, no, 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 no. 
people first. Right. People first. People first. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And you know, it's the same same thing when we were yeah. evacuating California. I I, drew, I I ran out to the house, ran up there, and Leah like Leah had a bunch of stuff in the vehicle that I'm like, why is this in here? <laughs> She's like, I panicked because we had never put it to the test, right. and well, it was unnecessary. Mm-hmm. You know, but it helps you actually prioritize what you really need to do, what right. you should be doing. It gives you that rote memory or the like you said, the muscle memory of mm-hmm. what's really important, what right. we really need to do, and the cascading series of events that need to happen. So that, because once again, like you said, it doesn't. It's not going to hit landfall the same way it did. A year ago, when the other hurricane, right. this chair, like literally, I'm going to get detailed. This little chair is going to blow differently than say this tree might fall over that didn't mm-hmm. fall over last year. That's right. You've got to you've got to be able to to pull back and mm-hmm. compartmentalize property to to fall back onto. Okay, well, I've drilled this, and I know that you know, kid one, two, kid kid two, kid three, mother of all. Okay, I'm taking care of that first. I don't care what that tree is doing right. when it falls. Mm-hmm. Instead of like, oh shit, the tree's falling down. What do I do? And right. we don't we don't take care of what the real priorities are. Mm-hmm. Testing it allows you to to put into per, put them in the proper order. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Put yeah. Things into with, their, into their with proper preserve order. life being yeah. yeah into their proper order without getting sidetracked right. in panic. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. which is what, another reason why it's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, and then you know testing it, and then I think keeping it updated so that's why i was like literally so that's why that's a full circle full so circle yeah we go through our ice box every year yeah so we talk about it we research it we test it or we you know test it and then mm-hmm. we just do that over again and it just becomes the maintenance of yeah our preparedness plan yeah that's all it is so ours, of- ours is usually the beginning of hurricane season which is coming up right and you know, it's just things get a little higher alert. Like, and it, we don't live under this fear and stress nope. that hurricanes going to come because, you know, most years they don't come. No, but, but you when they do come, check. you need to be ready. Mental check those. Oh, you know, I got to do this, this, and this. Yeah. Well, make there's sure things. There's sure things that are out there. It's like, well, do those lights always need to be up? Because it takes me four hours to take oh, those down. About the event lights. Right. Yeah. So, if if like it's last year was a particularly active hurricane season, and we only, we got. We got some strong storms, but we didn't. We didn't get a hurricane. No, we didn't get a hurricane, but we got some pretty strong storms. Right. I think we got a tropical storm. Is what we got. Well, I think Louisiana got a hurricane. But oh, her, Louisiana got a couple yeah. of hurricanes. Yeah. Um, Louisiana hit a lot. It had his ass handed to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was not good. Um, I think Lake Charles got two. Right, and yeah. like parts of Mississippi and, and mm-hmm. so like anyway. But anyway, um, but it's like this year before hurricane season, and they're predicting a pretty active one. Those lights don't necessarily need to stay up all the time. It takes takes me by myself four or five hours to take them down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so that's four or five hours I could be doing something else, and they're not important to my daily life. Right. So that's something we think about at the beginning of hurricane season, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's part of, part of our plan because we learned <laughs> this was a, this was a lesson learned. They were right. attached to a tree that fell down, and it was a nightmare getting that stuff cleaned up. And it was glass everywhere because they're glass bulbs, and, right, and it was right. just a it was just like. I'd rather take five hours in June to pull them down than than spend two days cleaning glass up off my ground and untangling wires and stuff right. from trees and right. cutting trees down without trying to cut wire and you know it's just it's yeah, a nightmare. A wisdom of being preemptive right. that way. Yeah. So that's a lesson learned we had yep. in Harvey. Yeah. That's those, awesome. Those things come down. So it is going along. So I'm going to recap. Number yep. one, dis- have the discussion and idea of what your plan is going to be. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Let's go through the the circle again. Circle of, yeah. Having a plan, um, researching what is specific. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, people focus, excuse me. That's people focus. Educate yeah. yourself yeah. on what yours is going to be in your in your actual area yeah. for whatever threat might be for you. Right. Actionable, real, right. not paranoia based. Yeah. Uh, number Pe- three, people focused, yes, and then focused. and then property focused. We could say sure. that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Asset yeah, focused, property asset. focused. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then put that plan to a test. Right. Just test it. Even yeah. if you start off small with just like, hey, how do we get out of this bedroom if the fire's if fire comes through the house? Right. You, know, just, you can start off small. Yeah. You test it, mm-hmm. uh, and then you maintain it. You talk about it again, and then mm-hmm. that's how that's the circle of circle of life. Our preparedness action plan yeah. is is and once again, it's not taboo. Don't make it a taboo thing or a weird thing to talk to. Just have discussions yeah. about it. Yeah, I've, yeah. But in where we live, I don't, that's not taboo. It happens so much. People just like right you, you know the people who move there and are new transplants right, yeah. to houston don't 
think about these things. So it's it's nice to be able to say you should probably think about these things. Right. Right. But you know, like our friends, and you just like sure. You know, yeah. and, we, and we call them. You know, are you gonna be okay? Do you need help? You know, and you and you, that's look, you look out for people that yeah. are like Serve especially new to the yeah. area. Yeah. yeah. So. So do that. Do what I said earlier. Go check out reasonablyprepared.com to get that ice box download to your email so I know who to send it to. It's a PDF form. Uh, easy to do. We, 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 it's all stuff that we, over the last literally decade, have have kind of ebb and flowed with like, okay, these are important to have. And you just, however many people are in your home, do the, fill out the checklist. Um, and get you know once again just do a little bit of work and have a little bit of fun on getting yourself re yeah. <laughs> prepared in this way it's i can't stress enough once again practice we talk about practice as if that's kind of one of the big things and put put it to the test you you will be better off for and able to serve your family and your greater community at large if you do it i want to thank my brother matthew for coming on discussing for and and calling me like hey man i really have a bunch to say about <laughs> about no literally about for, right yeah. form, forming a plan because it's it's just as important as having physical physical yeah. things i would say we could even argue that's even more important is because i could have all the water in the world but if i don't know what to do with it right. doesn't make any doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense i have all the guns in the world but if i don't know what to do with them right. not, it, nothing is getting accomplished yeah. so form that plan Talk with your significant others, your community, maybe churches or your companies. Uh, you know, if you're in an apartment, be sure to find out from your landlord what they have available and maybe start, you know, pressing a little bit mm -hmm. to, to, to do you, that. You work in a high rise, talk, yeah. to, talk to your HR, talk to your facilities team. Mm -hmm. And if, if they and don't have those and there's a landlord you have access to, talk to the landlord. They all know, have plans. Know your neighbors, yeah. you know, yeah. know your neighbors. Yeah. I, obviously, some are not going to be good neighbors, but the ones that are, you know, get with them uh, to help form a plan and to help each other out. Um, be blessed. Uh, go check out, you know, if you're a podcast, you can check out the YouTube channel, Reason Prepared, where, we'll, you know, we do all kinds of shorter stuff. And just because you're prepared doesn't mean you're paranoid. Hmm. Yep. True. You can even go to uh, reasonprepared.com to check out our merch, which well, says yeah. that right on there. Yeah. Re go check out our merch. Check everything else well, out. Don't check it out. Buy it. Go buy it. All go right. absolutely buy it. And uh, be blessed, grateful for everyone. Have a good night or a day or whatever it is you're doing in your life. Bye.